This is Phil Koopman with a tutorial on traceability. Traceability pervades the V. There's verification, which means that adjacent boxes going up and down the V are connected to each other properly. And there's validation, which means that the various types of tests actually ensure that the things on the left-hand side of the V were accomplished the way they were supposed to be. The general idea of traceability is that when you have more than one artifact, so a piece of software or design document or something like that, within a development process, you want to compare the different artifacts to each other to do checks and balances and make sure you didn't get anything wrong. So traceability is creating something that traces to a quality check on the result. There are two general types of traceability. One is verification, which is asking the question, did you do something the way that you said you'd do it? And there's validation, which is asking a somewhat different question. Validation is, did the thing you created behave the way it's supposed to? Generally speaking, you can think of verification as going up and down adjacent parts of the V, and validation as traversing across the V left to right, with testing going back to some design artifact to make sure that the design artifact actually does what it's supposed to do. The point of doing traceability is to ensure that nothing got left out, and that nothing was added that shouldn't be there. The anti-patterns for traceability are, you have tests that don't map to requirements. So if you have a test and there's no requirement, why are you doing that test? And it might be because the requirement is missing, or it might be because you're testing something that isn't supposed to be there. You might have requirements that aren't tested. I see requirement, but there's no test. How do I know it actually got done? There might be design elements or requirements that are just missing, and you find that by saying, how come in my design there's nothing that corresponds to the requirement above it? And you might have gold plating. Gold plating is, I have a feature that's not supposed to be there. If there's no requirement, why is that feature there? Traceability is a very general concept that can be applied across the entire design cycle. But let's give some concrete examples. The first one is design traceability. So design traceability might be a requirement that traces to a design, that traces to an implementation, or it might be a requirement that traces to a test. Here's an example figure showing a requirements to state chart traceability spreadsheet. The various rows are different states and different transitions within a state chart, and the columns are different requirements. And the point of this is that there's an X where a particular state traces to a particular requirement. For example, state 2.3 vend on the third row of data traces to requirement 2.1 and 2.4a and 2.4b. While it's possible to get fancy and do things like say, hey, there's a high or medium or low traceability, in practice, usually it's enough to just put an X where you think it mostly traces and leave blank where it doesn't. This is not supposed to be high precision instrument, but what it does do is if you see a table like this and there's a completely empty column, it means nothing is there contributing to that requirement. And if there's a completely empty row, that means that that row is there, but there's no requirement causing it to be there. So an empty row or an empty column, either one tells you you have some sort of traceability problem that you should pay more attention to. Another type of traceability example is software quality assurance traceability. And this has to do with confirming a process is being carried out. For SQA traceability, every process step, so every box in the V, should be producing some sort of document or artifact. That document and artifact, represented by the arrows in the V, is a piece of information that's transferred to the next step. If you can't find that document or artifact, then you have to ask whether the step really happened. And ideally, you have some sort of quality metric on whether or not that design and artifact were done according to reasonable quality standards. Another type of traceability example is safety analysis. Safety analysis is covered much more extensively in other lectures, but one of the simple examples is you have a hazard, and that hazard results in a safety requirement, and that safety requirement results in a necessary mitigation, and then you want to validate that the hazard is actually mitigated. If you break a step in that chain, then you're not sure the hazard's been mitigated. Traceability through that chain lets you know that you've successfully validated that you've mitigated all the hazards identified. A last example is defect traceability. You actually want to ensure that all the bugs that are important get fixed. And that traceability chain looks like there's a bug report, 
to a defect that's been identified, to a task to fix the bug, and code check-in from the result of the bug fix, and a regression test to make sure that, sure enough, the bug was actually fixed. With all these examples, there are two types of traceability. One traceability is left to right across the arrows. That's verification. And the last type of traceability is taking a look at the end, for example, regression test and the bug fix, and going backwards and say, hey, did that actually fix the bug report? And that would be validation. An important thing to do when you're trying to do traceability is to put identifying numbers on things to make it easier to identify what you're talking about in a traceability table. Here's an example requirements traceability matrix that has to do with a flight booking application. And you can see there are four main columns. There's a column pair called business requirements document. And you can see there the business requirements are numbered with ID numbers. And then there's a nickname so that you can understand what it means. The second major column is the functional requirements document. And there, there are function requirements, which are also numbered and also some nicknames to make it a little more human accessible. There's the third column, which is the priority of the requirement, low, medium, high. And there's the last column, which is a test case document, again, with a test case number. This document shows you traceability from the business requirements through the function requirements to the test case ID. But you can also use it if you use a search to look up a test case and say, why does that test case exist? It ought to go back to requirements. This table is complete, but you could find traceability problems by saying, for example, if I see a business requirement that doesn't have functional requirements or doesn't have a test case, that's a problem. Or if I have a test case that doesn't have a corresponding functional requirement and the functional requirement doesn't have a corresponding business requirement, that's also a problem. As another example, let's consider traceability for hazard mitigation. The diagram in the upper left of the slide talks about a class diagram of the types of things involved in hazard mitigation. And you have to read it bottom to top. So the bottom left of that part of the figure says test case, and a test case tests whether or not a requirement above it has been satisfied. That safety requirement mitigates a fault that's above that and the fault contributes to a hazard. Looking at the diagram in the bottom right of this slide, you can see that there's a traceability, in this case in graphical form, instead of a spreadsheet from left to right. Hazard 101 can be caused by either fault one or fault two, and fault one has requirements one, two, and three as safety requirements to deal with that fault. Fault two has requirements nine, 10, and 11 as requirements to deal with that fault. And then there are test cases, T1 through T6, that contribute to ensuring that various ones of the requirements have been met. Traceability here is making sure there's no orphan boxes. Every test case should be connected to at least one requirement. Every requirement should be connected to at least one fault. And every fault should be connected to at least one hazard. And going from left to right, there should be no bubble that isn't ultimately connected to a test case. Verification is making sure that from left to right, everything flows. Validation is making sure that there's at least one test case for every hazard. While the essential idea of traceability is straightforward, in other words, make sure that various steps in the design process actually trace to each other, there are some key ideas to make things workable in practice. The first one is, as simple as traceability may seem, it actually does find problems on real projects. It's a simple check to do, it's worth your time, because if you can find even one problem with traceability, all the efforts paid for itself. Sometimes the problems found are simply requirements that got forgotten, but sometimes what you find is gold plating, that the design has a bunch of features that aren't actually acquired, and those features increase maintenance costs, increase the chance for bugs, and so on. In order to make traceability practical, everything in your design flow ought to have an ID tag to make it easy to build these tables. So you notice that all the requirements had a number, all the tests had a number, and so on. Numbering everything doesn't take a lot of effort, but it makes traceability much, much easier to deal with. Traceability can pay off later in the life cycle by giving you an idea of how pieces are related. If you have to make a change, you can go back to the traceability tables and get an idea, for example, if I'm changing a particular software function, which test cases also have to change to track that. There are a number of traceability pitfalls. The most common one is that the IDs for traceability are at too big a chunk. 
So for example, you might have a requirement where the traceability is simply the section number in a large requirements document that has tens or hundreds of paragraphs. If you trace at that level, it can be very difficult to tell exactly what you're tracing to, and you're likely to miss things. Another practical one is some folks like to use auto numbering within uh, word processing documents to generate traceability numbers. And if you add a paragraph or make an edit, it can renumber everything and break your traceability. So for that reason, typically traceability numbers are hand entered and have an alphanumeric characteristic to avoid that kind of problem. The last pitfall is using the wrong tool. Spreadsheets are great for small embedded projects. They're used all the time. Uh, but they don't scale to big projects. There are big project tools that are expensive, cumbersome. If you have a really big project, you need to use them, but trying to use them in a small project is just overkill. So generally people use spreadsheets for small projects and they use one of the big requirements tool chains when they get a really big project involving hundreds or thousands of people.